Hello, this is a final update for the Fisher Reproductive Dembox Project. Fishers are the largest obligate cavity user in North America, and my goal was to determine if female fishers would use an artificial den for reproduction. We started in 2013 building structures that mimicked natural den trees. They have a large internal diameter. They're insulated because fisher have their young early in the spring, and they have an entrance dimension that mimics a natural tree. It's big enough for a female fisher to get in, but it's small enough that a larger predator cannot enter. We hung the boxes at approximately three meters off the ground and used trail cameras, hair snaggers, and a small GoPro camera to look inside the structures. It took until our second year of monitoring to document fisher use of the boxes for reproduction. And in the spring of 2015, we had females use two different den boxes in the bridge in Chicolton areas. In 2016, we had three different females use den boxes in both areas. One of the females used two different den boxes for her solitary kit. In 2017, females had young in four different den boxes, and we identified between one and two kits at each box. One female did not appreciate our camera filming inside her home. While another mother did not seem to mind the intrusion. We also had an infanticide event in 2017, where a male fisher was able to gain entry to the box and kill the two kits inside. Squirrel chewing damage at the entrance likely facilitated the male's entry. I believe that the squirrels are attracted to the glues in the plywood and chewing damage has enlarged the entrance at approximately 20% of the structures. To address this issue, we installed a solid wood molding around the entrance on all den boxes. Our assessment of the molding one year later showed that no squirrel damage at, at the entrance and new den boxes now have a replaceable solid wood door frame and molding to address this problem. Monitoring in the final year of the study found two females using den boxes to raise kits. One had used the same den box in 2015 to raise kits. The second was a new female who spent considerable time with her kits at the den box. The study has shown that female fishers will use the artificial den boxes to give birth to and raise kits. I believe the next step would be to determine if den boxes could be used to sustain a population of fishers where the natural den trees are limiting the population. There are many areas of BC where widespread large-scale fire and salvage forest harvesting have impacted fisher habitat. Some of these areas may make good candidates for testing the utility of den boxes as a conservation tool. Lastly, I would like to thank our major project sponsors for their support. The help of the Habitat Conservation Trust Foundation, the Forest Enhancement Society of BC, and the Fish and Wildlife Compensation Program was invaluable in showing that female fishers would use artificial dens for reproduction. Continued investment in fisher conservation will help ensure that BC retains a viable fisher population.